So Helen Stringer is our first presenter, and she was born in 2532. She escaped the third time war with cyber chickens. She arrived in our era and began study of the divine to become a first level cleric. Second level. Second level cleric. <laughs> she rolled her stats, and with a phenomenal 20 in her INT score, she realized the cleric class was utter bullshit. <laughs> Helen multiclassed into an entrepreneur, turning her skills to develop the free thought and secular community in the form of KC Oasis. She owns one husband, two children, and three WWF title belts. Which is, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Helen Stringer. Some type of heart issue. Um, you hear a lot of people think that 
when um, you've left religion that you're hurt or you're mad and you're angry at the church. That's totally not the case. It was literally a matter of studying things and realizing, for me, for me, that it didn't hold weight anymore. So it was like ideology after ideology just slowly began to unravel. So the ironic thing is, is that although I had pretty much divorced myself of most religious beliefs, my husband and I were still hanging around the church. When we moved back to Kansas City about seven years ago, we actually knew that the best place to develop friendships was going to be the church. Now, yes, don't get me wrong, you can go to your local meetup and make friends, you could go join a sport, go rules, um, or join an activity, um, or go on a okay Cupid and build relationships. But there's something to be said. Yeah, see, you know what I'm talking about. Who's here right now from OK Cupid? You got anyone? Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So you guys can all find each other later. Um, <clears throat> there's something to be said about the relationships that tend to develop at churches or at religious or faith institutions. Um, there's the level of frequency. Um, there's the tendency to expect you know, community support. Um, there's also a common shared experience, and that's something um, that you tend to only see in those kinds of communities. So, we got back to Kansas City, we started to attend the Vineyard Church every year to go. We joined a small group. Small groups, if you don't know, they tend to be um, these home groups, kind of an approved Sunday school-ish kind of thing, um, but you agree to all go to someone's house, and you hang out, maybe read a book together, talk about some subject or whatever. Um, so we joined the young married and no kids at that time. Of course, we have children now. Um, but the funny thing is, and maybe it's not funny, it's kind of cool, is that those people became our closest circle of friends. You know, we fell in love with these people. We were doing life together. It was really great. So the problem was, is that um, once we started to have kids, you know how a lot of people start going to church once they have kids, right? You know what I'm talking about. We did the opposite. We got the hell out of there. Um, we realized that we didn't want someone telling their children that they were broken or that they needed to make this really big decision about this deity when their brains weren't even developed enough to even try and reason that. So we found ourselves, you know, young family with no kids. I was kids, but no community. And then it dawned on me. Why aren't we doing this on a grander scale? Why can't we do this for secular people? Why can't we create a community for families, for people to build relationships, um, to get to know one another, but without the dogma, without the ideologies? And this is why I created Kansas City Oasis. We are the city's first full alternative to faith-based community. So, Religion shouldn't have a monopoly over community, and let's face it, they truly do. Furthermore, churches have dogma and are inherently exclusive, and Oasis is nothing of the sort. The church has efficiently built communities that span the globe, and we can learn from that, and we can do even better. Now, while a church has a pastor that tells you what to believe, we have speakers to create dialogue and conversation. While a church has music for worship, we offer music as a form of art. Our goal isn't to tell people what they should think or to fill their heads with more spiritual stuff. It's to connect, elevate, and empower one another. Now, we believe that the future of secularism is in this kind of community. So every day, more of us and more people are popping their heads out of the sand and, and um, looking for like-minded people. <clears throat> Secular um, activist organizations tend to be where people land first because for some reason they tend to be more visible. The problem with that is, is that they don't tend to solely focus on building community. Now, we nuns, the NONESs, those who don't hold any religious belief, happen to be the fastest growing demographic in the nation. So if you look at the level of uh, religiosity decline in the U.S., just up to 2013. And it's just staggeringly, it's dropping faster than anything they have ever seen in history. So secular people are becoming more visible, less reticent. 
And you know what? It's time for us to band together, to get to know one another, and stop being sidelined because we don't do church. One of the most important reasons of doing Kansas City Oasis is to gather um, families and have a place for children. Whether we like it or not, I see churches as pursuing our children. So when my son goes to school and his friends talk about being a part of a youth group or being part of a church, and it's so much fun, and he wonders why we don't go, I have to answer him with that. And let's face it, churches do a lot of fun stuff, like lock-ins, parties, ski trips even. Of my youth, some of the greatest memories I have were at church. So, <clears throat> the church wants you to believe that it's all supernatural stuff that actually binds people together. And then the reality is the social benefits of belonging, that's the real magic. And it's a magic we should no longer let churches monopolize over anymore. The community response has been overwhelmingly positive. Time Magazine even has recognized what we are doing. Our sister organization, Houston, uh, Houston Oasis in Houston, Texas, was featured in a two-page article two months ago in Time Magazine. They shared that Oasis is the community model for non-believers nationwide. <coughs> Time also recognized that secular communities can meet the needs that faith-based communities used to meet. So hear that again. Time Magazine recognized that secular organizations can meet the needs that churches used to. I think that's huge. For those of us who are secular, it should be a call to arms. We know who we are. We know who we are as humanists and how much we care about each other in the world. And it's time that we no longer just keep to ourselves. At Oasis, we have a set of values that kind of guide how we do life and how we interact with the world. And I want to share those with you today. <clears throat> First one, people are more important than beliefs. This one's huge because it's one of the ones that you see churches violate the most. So we aren't concerned about how your synapses fire in your head and what your decisions you, know, you are making or what you do and don't believe in. It's not important to us. And the reality is when you don't have people policing your thoughts, you have a better opportunity of being your true authentic self. And when you can be your true authentic self, you actually have a better opportunity to build really great relationships, to connect, connect with other people on a whole higher level. I would say that that one value is going to be one of the reasons that one has made us very successful and recognized internationally, but also will make us actually more effective at building community than history has ever seen before. Our second one is reality is known through reason, not scripture, or revelation. The third one is meaning comes from making a difference. Last Wednesday, I attended a debate. Um, it was a secular humanism versus, um, I guess, Christian thought, like, which one fit reality? The question was not that great. <laughs> <clears throat> what well, was really interesting, the Christians really did not, they could have done better. It was really disappointing to see them go down so badly. But, um, <laughs> What they said over and over again was that if you are not religious, you will have meaningless lives. We are hopeless. And they would even highlight it in their PowerPoint. I mean, they really wanted to like push it home that your life is meaningless. <laughs> like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, I would say the people that I've met through Oasis and getting involved in some secular work, I would say I've met people with more meaning in their lives than I did when I was in the religious circle. Um, more people who are inclined to give back and to do good and do nothing but altruistic you know, activities and want to do nothing more than, than help their fellow man. And this is where we uh, can define one of the things where we get our meaning is by simply making a difference. And how we all want to make a difference looks different to all of us, which is cool. Because diversity is something to be celebrated for once, not shunned. Um, it makes us richer and stronger as a community because we all want to give back in different ways and that's what we need as a community and as a culture. Human hands solve human problems. So it's you and I, not some guy in the sky necessarily, who's actually helping each other. It's us taking the initiative to actually go out and do great things and to help make the world a better place. And the last one, simply put, be accepting and be accepted. So, what 
you gain by being a part of an oasis? Well, you get the opportunity to do things like this. Now, we haven't started serving alcohol yet, which I'll look into that. Um, <laughs> you get to hear some really great speakers. So we offer something like a TED Talk every single Sunday. Um, for example, we've had Debbie Jackson come talk about raising her transgender child. Anyone who saw, see her, um, she had a viral video out a couple months back. Um, that I think she spoke at Unity Temple or at Unity something like that, or All Souls, and talked about raising her um, transgender child and the challenges with that. And it was an incredible video. If you haven't ever heard it, it's worth looking up. But she was amazing. We've also had Sandra Mead, who is the state chair of Equality Kansas, come and talk. And last week, we had Nathan Phelps come talk. Now, he is the son of the late Fred Phelps, who left his father's compound at 18 years of age, and he is now an LGBT activist, and also does a lot of work to end child abuse, and he was incredible as well. But we offer these speakers every single Sunday, so if you like this, you would really like Oasis. You also get the opportunity to see different musical performances. Um, we have different genres come in every single week, and really, um, the options are endless. We're not restricted, really, by anything. So we have actually had um, a jazz band come play, full bass, violin, um, and this group actually connected at Oasis, and they actually perform around Kansas City now as a result, and they are really amazing. Um, we've had different folk and Americana singers. We had Miss Conception. She's a local spoken word artist and female rapper here in Kansas City. And we've also had Bo Bledsoe, which from what I understand, he is probably one of the best guitar players in the Midwest. And he is amazing. He played like a 12, I think this is one of them, the 12 string guitar, or broke, something like that. It was, it was pretty amazing. And we are so excited because this weekend, we have Smith and Taylor, their award-winning folk singers, coming to play for us. And they are from Denver and Houston. So they're actually coming into Kansas City just to play at Oasis. Another thing that you gain by being part of an Oasis is the chance to give back to your community. So on, on the fourth month, now we've only, we started in April, I didn't mention that, so we are a fairly new community that has just grown really quickly. Our fourth month, we held a blood drive. Our goal was to uh, give 20 units of blood, and we gave exactly 20 units of blood. For a young organization, they all were kind of shocked by that, the um, community blood center was. So we will be having more of those every quarter, because you can get every quarter. Another thing we did, on our third Sunday, we had Be The Match come out talk about being a bone marrow donor. And we were able to register 18 new bone marrow donors. And a lot of the people are at Oasis or already registered donors as well. So it's really cool. I would say that gives meaning to life. So to know that we are 18 people closer to getting someone the life-saving bone marrow donor that they need, that's true meaning. That's actually doing something for the world. We also serve at a domestic violence shelter. We make and serve dinner every single month. And this month, we are actually, or this Saturday, we're going to be at Habitat Restore, just helping around there as well. So um, we often have one or two volunteer opportunities every month. Now, one of the cool things about being part of an oasis is that you get to go to things like conferences. That sounds really boring if you're in the corporate world, but it's not in the secular world. So we went to a Posticon up in Omaha, Nebraska, and the keynote speaker was Neil deGrasse Tyson. And many of us, this is my husband with good old Neil. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, first of all, is an amazing speaker, but he's also one of the nicest, most kind people I have probably ever um, seen. So, and you need to be a part of an oasis, you get opportunities like meeting Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> and a lot of us danced the night away with Lawrence Krauss. So if you know who Lawrence Krauss is, it was a lot of fun. Yes, literally, we danced the night away. They, they made us leave the dance floor. And um, we danced the night away with a uh, world-renowned physicist, Lawrence Krauss. This is what real nerds do, right? <laughs> um, another thing about Oasis that you could gain we have a lot of people meet their, either the loves of their life or maybe even, you know, just a love interest. Opportunities like that tend to come up in communities like that, and it's really great to see people connecting. But most importantly, people at Oasis get to connect with like-minded individuals um, who want to live their lives and think for themselves, but also have the opportunity to give back to the world and to the community. 
So don't take my word for it. We listen to what our community says about Kansas City Oasis. Senta, she's here. Um, Senta shared that I love the chance to connect with my old friends and make new ones on a weekly basis. This is Josh Laws. He shared that I'm personally really skeptical of all group community get organized type deals. I didn't have a good experience with them as a young person, and it became almost a defining point of my personality to reject anything that I associated with groupthink. So I'm not going to lie that I was skeptical of Oasis too. Luckily, my curiosity overcame my cynicism because it really has been amazing getting to feel like I'm part of something that really is a force for good. Oasis has given my boys a community that they can draw ideas, inspiration, and life experience from in a way that couldn't have been provided to them without it. Last one, Stacy Leonard. She shared that my husband and I are new to Kansas City, and I've been really struggling to find a place for myself, and I almost cried today during the meeting because I finally feel like I have somewhere I belong. So if you want to learn more, you can go to our website, kcoasis.org. We meet every single Sunday at 11 a.m. at 1800 Baltimore, Kansas City, Missouri, in the Crossroads District. So at Oasis, we are empowered by reason, connected by compassion. Join us any Sunday so that we can welcome you home.